Hi, my name is Becca and when I was um, a little kid I was really lucky because my mum uh, was part of Greenham Common Women's Peace Camp uh, which was uh, an amazing action that lasted nearly 20 years in the end although I don't think anyone knew it was going to be no one knew that at the time, which is a really interesting thing to be part of. Um, nothing on the, about it was a foregone conclusion. It was stuff that women were making up every day, uh, living outside on Greenham Common, trying to get uh, the American nuclear-headed weapons taken out of uh, a base that was occupying common land uh, and save the world in the process. And um, they used something called non-violent direct action, which sounds like passivity and sometimes it is sometimes you go heavy and passive when you're arrested and then you let the police move you and then you come and lie down again in the road to block traffic or whatever but actually a lot of it is also extremely proactive which that that in itself is a proactive way of dealing with someone else's violence on your person but um, you also have to be very creative to get points made and and take actions that don't involve uh, traditional methods of, uh, of of violence and that's uh, that's one of the things that all the different women at Greenham became real experts at and have handed down through other campaigns um, for, ever since the camp um, and in their lives. Now one of some of the actions um, that I know about from talking to women who lived at Greengate are really interesting. Um, there's amazing stuff that happens all over the place, but one of the things about nonviolent direct action is that you take some personal responsibility for your actions and you work um, collectively uh, in an uh, agreed way with other women. So there's no plan, there's no one person in charge, you're all collectively taking responsibility and therefore actions could pop up all over the place. So sometimes green and women worked all together and sometimes th hundreds of thousands of women came to join them and sometimes women worked just in little small bands or individually and did things just at their own little gates. Um, one of the women that I spoke to, Carolyn, can remember um, living at Greengate and there being an action that involved thousands and thousands of women. She just says she remembers them coming, she'd arrived and they, there were low, thousands of women already there and they were tying things from their life to the fence at Greengate and all the way around the base. They were tying, um, you know, mem mem memories, uh, photographs. They were tying baby beauties. They were tying teddy bears. They were tying um, things they'd bought from their homes, their houses, their lives, things of value and importance to them. She said in the end it covered the whole fence, which is nine miles all the way around this military base, this illegal military base. Um, but there are other things that happened just at Greengate. One of them um, was an action called Raising the Dragon, which I love the sound of. And um, I, I I think possibly that the, that's one of the main, there's a lot of symbolism at Greengate, and I'm sure, and at Greenham altogether. And I'm sure that part of that is the Welsh connection. The women that originally started the camp came from Wales. So dragons become a massive part of the symbolism um, of, 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 the, of the life of the camp. And they seem to come up a lot around Greengate. Um, and then there's an, a, an action that I like to, I like, <laughs> I like to think of as an egg, a teddy and a rabbit walk into a base, which was one that my friend Tanya told me about, but she said she, they basically broke into the base, climbed over the, the fences. One of them dressed as a teddy bear, one of them dressed as a rabbit and her dressed as an, her and another woman, I think dressed as, as eggs. She literally said she had this massive foam egg over her, so she couldn't, and little slits to see out of. She said she must look just like two little legs and a big egg. And she, she didn't, she couldn't see really where she was going. So they're running up and down the runway to stop planes landing and things like that in this peaceful but very very irritating and expensive to the to the military way and she's zigzagging up and down across the, the around the place because she can't tell where she's going um in her egg suit um and she said it was really like a simultaneously hilarious and terrifying because they didn't know there was a there was a actually a, you know a shoot to kill order on these women that our government had said yes you can shoot them if they get into the base um so they didn't know how they were going to be treated by the americans or the british soldiers that were in there um actually no women were shot lots of other things did happen to them and they were often endangered but they weren't shot and i think that's probably because british squaddies just thought i was not i didn't sign up to shoot women dressed as eggs or otherwise who looked like my mum and my sister and my girlfriend and my nan you know in what's technically peacetime in their own country so they did no one actually um drew, fired on them in which is uh, obviously a very good thing um the other thing I suppose about Greengate, which is interesting in terms of actions, is that its nickname was the Sanctuary. And Tanya talks about this little dip down into, because it's a, it's a wooded area, it's one of the prettiest gates. 
perhaps one of the only pretty gates really um, and if you went down into a dip into the trees even a little further there were some really permanent structures where women lived there and actually other women didn't even visit them that much it was a place you could go if you needed real space real sanctuary after you'd perhaps done some been even served some prison time or done some really hectic actions in other parts of Greenham Common Women's Peace Camp. <laughs>